أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we will continue this evening in our series on the Sira Nabawiya or the prophetic Sira uh, that we started last week. Our first class was last week. Jazakumullah khairah. And we started last week with talking about the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who can tell me some of the names uh, that were mentioned last week of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam? Ahmed, where where is that name found? Quran. In the Quran, very good. Another name, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Where is that name found? In the Quran and the Sunnah. In the Quran and the Sunnah. All right, one more. Who can give me one that was found only in the Sunnah? Al Muqaffi. Al Very good. And would you say, Jasim? That's in the Quran. Yeah, that's the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That, but that's found in the Quran. I was asking about the Al Hashir. Al Hashir. Al Hashir. Taib. Uh, right. Al Mahi. Al Mahi. Very good. Taib. So today, inshallah, ta'ala, we're going to discuss. <coughs> uh, we're going to talk about the lineage of the Prophet. وسلم, and the Messenger وسلم, was chosen. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not random. Uh, it wasn't just something that was haphazard. But rather Allah ta'ala chose the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah azza wa he says in Surah Al-An'am. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. Allah knows best as to where he places his message. Allah knows best as to where he places his message. Message Meaning Allah Ta'ala chooses <coughs> Specifically Individuals to carry The message And so it wasn't something haphazard But rather Allah Ta'ala Chose the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And his lineage The lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Was chosen <coughs> As we're going to see Um in a hadith that uh, was collected by uh, Al Imam Al Bayhaqi and, uh, and others, Al Imam Al Tabari and others, and it was declared Hassan by Al Shaykh Al Albani, Rahimahullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said about himself, Inni kharajtu min nikah, walam ukhraj min sifah. Inni kharajtu. Min nikah, walam ukhraj min sifah. He says, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam about himself. Indeed, I uh, I was produced, or I I came about <coughs> due to marriage, and I did not come about due to fornication or adultery. And so, this the Prophet alaihi salatu wasalam is affirming that in his in his lineage, from him all the way back, from him all the way, that his lineage is based on marriage. And his lineage, there's no one, there's no one in his lineage that produced a child out of wedlock, and then that was one of the fathers of the Prophet. Does that make sense? Meaning all of the Fathers of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Were the product of a legitimate marriage Were the product of a legitimate marriage uh, <clears throat> And so this shows us The importance of marriage and having children in wedlock <coughs> Because if, 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 uh, if, the, uh, if a child being born out of wedlock 
or being born in wedlock was the same exact thing, had the same level, had the same virtue, then there would be no need for the Prophet ﷺ to mention this virtue about himself. Because if it was the same thing, then it wouldn't matter whether his great-great-great-great-grandfather uh, was born in wedlock or out of wedlock. But the message of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is affirming that in his lineage, every single person in his lineage was a, was a product of a legitimate marriage. And so <coughs> this shows us the importance for us that why when we want to engage in the fulfillment of our desires, then it should be done through a legitimate means. Because when a person uh, produces a son or a daughter, he produces a child out of wedlock, then he does that child a disservice. Then he's doing his child a disservice. What disservice? The fact that he, that child was born out of wedlock and that's going to be a, a taint on the reputation of that child. It's going to be a taint on the reputation of that child. Now, does that mean that child, it's impossible for him or her to go to Jannah? La, it doesn't mean that. However, uh, if you, <coughs> even in, in American, old school American culture, when you go to um, the Midwest, uh, some of the places in the South, uh, even to this day in the Bible Belt, um, if you were to approach a family uh, for marriage, you want to marry their daughter, uh, you approach the family, they start asking you questions and they find out that your mother and father weren't married when you, uh, were, uh, when you were born, then that's going to be a, a check mark, an X check mark against you. Uh, and, and still to this day, in a lot of places here in the United States, amongst the non-Muslims, that's a, it's a big, uh, big no-no for them. Uh, when you come in even certain places, uh, if you want to get a job and they do certain background checks, they, they like to make sure that uh, the, the person, they call it being wholesome. And that's one of the things of, uh, is defined as being wholesome, is that you come from a, uh, a product of a legitimate marriage. Ala kullin, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the product of legitimate marriage. After legitimate marriage, after legitimate marriage, based upon the authenticity of this hadith. <coughs> In the Sahih of Al Imam Muslim, he brings with his chain of narration to Wathila ibn al Asqa'. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I know that's a, it's kind of a, a lot to say. Wathila ibn al Asqa'. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah astafa kinanata min waladi Ismail, wa astafa Qurayshan min kinana, wa astafa min Quraysh bani Hashim, wa astafani min bani Hashim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, Indeed, Allah chose from the children of Ismail kinana. <coughs> and he chose Quraysh, from Kinana, and he chose uh, Bani Hashim from Quraysh, and he chose me from Bani Hashim. So this shows that the Prophet ﷺ wasn't just chosen, but he was chosen from the chosen, from the chosen, from the chosen. He was chosen from the chosen, from the chosen. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his lineage is Mustafa. His lineage is chosen by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In the Sahih of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, <coughs> the famous hadith of uh, when Abu Sufyan, and he went, uh, this is before the Islam of Abu Sufyan. <coughs> uh, this was in the early stages of the da'wah when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was still in Mecca. Uh, and Abu Sufyan was speaking to Haraqal. Abu Sufyan was speaking to Haraqal. And the Azim al Rum, the one, the leader of the Romans. And so uh, Haraqal asked Abu Sufyan, Tell me about his lineage. 
tell me about his lineage. And so Abu Sufyan, uh, he said, Huwa fina dhu nasab. Huwa fina dhu nasab. He is a person who possesses a lineage. Meaning, not meaning he, everyone has a lineage, but what he meant was, he's someone who we consider to have good lineage. He's someone that is considered to be from amongst us, to have a highly regarded <coughs> a highly regarded uh, lineage. And so uh, the Prophet wasallam, from these evidences, it shows us that he comes from uh, a, a, a long line, a long line of individuals that were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A long line who were chosen by Allah. And so these evidences show us the, we call istifa and nasib, the, the nobility or the chosenness of uh, his lineage. But also, it wasn't just his lineage that was chosen. It was the time he lived in as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, خَيْرُ nas qarni." The best of humanity is my generation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, بُعِثْتُ مِنْ خَيْرِ قُرُونِ بَنِي آدَمْ بُعِثْتُ مِنْ خَيْرِ قُرُونِ بَنِي آدَمْ he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have been brought out or I've been sent in during the best generation of the sons of Adam. And these two hadith that I just mentioned, Khairul Nas Qarni, uh, and the other hadith, the second hadith, is they're both in the Sahih of Al Imam al Bukhari. So this shows us not only was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was he chosen in lineage, but he was chosen in time. The time in which the Prophet ﷺ lived was the best time of the sons of Adam. As he said, alayhi <coughs> salatu So let's, let's talk about his parents. Let's talk about the parents of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, so we'll start with his mother. Uh, his mother, her name was Amina which most people uh, know that. Her name was Amina. But we know her father's name. Anyone know her father's name? Wahab. 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 Amina to bintu Wahab ibn Abdi Manaf ibn Zuhra ibn Kilab. Uh, Amina, the daughter of Wahab, was the son of Abdul Manaf, which this Abdul Manaf is not the Abdul Manaf of the lineage of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're going, to, we're going to come to that, inshallah. Because the lineage of, uh, of Amina meets with the lineage of, 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 of Abdullah in Kilab. Because she is the daughter of Wahab, who is the son of Abdul Manaf, who is the son of, who is the son of Zuhra, who is the son of Kilab. Now, the, now <coughs> in the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Kilab had multiple sons From them was Qusay And from them was Zuhra And Qusay we're going to get to him Inshallah Ta'ala when we talk about The nasib of uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in full So she And her husband Abdullah Their lineage is meat So she's from the Nasab, the, the lineage of Zuhra ibn Kilab, and Abdullah was from the lineage of Qusay ibn Kilab. Right? So they both, their lineages meet in Kilab. And at that time, Wahab was considered the Sayyid of Bani Zuhra. <coughs> he was considered to be like their, their leader, he was considered to be the most noble from amongst them. And Ibn Hisham, who was the famous historian, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said that the daughter of Wahab, me referring to Amina, was the most virtuous in lineage of Quraysh. At that time, the daughter 
uh, of the women who were present at that time from the tribe of Quraysh, Amina, the daughter of Wahab, was the most virtuous uh, in, uh, in lineage from the women of Quraysh. <coughs> and so this shows us uh, the, uh, the status that the mother of the Prophet ﷺ had to the point where she was called Zahra to Quraysh. You know what a Zahra is? Was, huh? Huh? Right, the, the, the flower. Right, but she was from the tribe of Zuhra. So they, but they called her Zuhra to Quraysh. Zuhra to Quraysh, meaning the, the flower, the blossoming of, of Quraysh. Because she was considered the, the, the top level or top or the highest level of nobility, the highest level as it relates to lineage uh, from the women who were present at that time from the women of Quraysh. Uh, now the father of the Prophet wasallam, his name was Abdullah. So his mother was Amina and his father was Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Um, both, both the parents of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are going to be in the hellfire bi nas Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the text of the Prophet himself Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and uh, well, firstly, uh, let's support that with evidence. The first uh, hadith, um, we're going to mention two hadith. Both of them are going to be in the Sahih of Al-Imam Muslim. Uh, the first, you can, it will be hadith number 203, and the second is hadith number 976. But both of them are in the Sahih of Al-Imam Muslim. The first hadith is in reference to the father of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And it's the hadith of Anas, where Imam Muslim, he brings his chain of narration to Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that a man came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and said, O Messenger of Allah, where is my father? He said, O Messenger of Allah, where is my father? Aina Abi. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Finnar. Your father is in the hellfire. So the man walked away, and it was as if the he was uh, he was affected by that. He was affected uh, by that, and so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he called him back, and he told the man, "Inna abi wa abaka finnar." He said, "Indeed, my father and your father is in the hellfire," and this was a means to uh, console. Uh, the companion because he was just told his father's in the hellfire and that would make him sad would make him sad but now that he heard from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this he's not alone in this that his own father is also in the hellfire it doesn't make him feel that he's uh, being picked on or uh, the, that he is being singled out because this is something that it happened to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. <coughs> so this shows us that the father of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the hellfire. Um, the second hadith, which is the hadith of Abi Huraira. Al-Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah, he brings with his uh, chain of narration to Abi Huraira, to radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, I asked permission from my Lord to seek forgiveness for my mother. And Allah did not give me permission. And I asked or I asked permission to visit her grave and he gave me permission. And so this shows us that uh, the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also uh, a person of disbelief, a person of shirk. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow or he prohibited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from seeking forgiveness. Al-Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala in his Sunan al-Kubra, he said 
وَأَبَوَاهُ كَانَ مُشْرِكَيْنِ بِدَلِيلٍ He said, and his, and his parents, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said his parents were mushrik, uh, they, were, they were from the mushrikeen, and the evidence is, and he brought these, he mentioned these two uh, hadith. Now it is not, as some people, some of the Muslims, when, you he, when they hear uh, that, when they hear you say that the parents of the Prophet والسلام, they're in the hellfire, it's almost, uh, they get angry with you, and it's almost as if uh, you are making a ta'an, or you're making, uh, you're speaking ill of the Prophet والسلام, And that is not the case. Firstly, number one, because the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, he is the one who has informed us of this. And if had it not been for the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam informed us, then we would have no knowledge and it would be impermissible for us to speak about who was in the hellfire or who was in Jannah. Because we don't put anyone in the hellfire and we don't put anyone in Jannah, meaning specifically, people by name, specifically. We don't say so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, is in Jannah, and we don't say so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, is in the hellfire, unless we have a specific evidence from Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So had it not been for the text that came to us from the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, it would be impermissible for us to say anything about the parents of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the first thing. Number two, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam, is not the first one, not the first prophet and messenger to have a relative go to the hellfire. He's not the first one. <coughs> uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father is in Jannah. No, Allah subhanahu wa taala called him Aduwullah, the enemy of Allah. In the Quran, Allah taala called the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The enemy of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Al Tawbah, وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَنْ مَوْعِدَةٍ وَعَدَهَا إِيَّاهُ فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌّ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَأَوَاهٌ حَلِيمٌ. Allah Taala says in Surah Al Tawbah, Surah number nine, uh, and the seeking of forgiveness. Of Ibrahim for his father was not anything except based upon a promise that he gave him. تَبَيَّنَ And here's the point of proof. تَبَيَّنَ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌّ لِلَّهِ Once it became clear, man, once it became clear to Ibrahim السلام, that his father is an enemy to Allah, تَبَرَّأَ مِنْ He freed himself from him. He, he relieved himself from him. He separated himself from him. Inna Ibrahim la awahun halim. Indeed, Ibrahim is compassionate <coughs> and uh, compassionate and patient. So this ayah shows us that the father of Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam was an enemy to Allah by nas of the Quran. The ayah of the Quran explicitly mentions that he was an enemy to Allah subhanahu wa taala. If we take a look at the son of Nuh, alayhi salam, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ, من أهلك, He's not from your family. Uh, look at the wife of Lut, the wife of Lut, alayhi salam. She was destroyed along with the people of Lut. <coughs> and, and so this shows us that the fact that uh, the parents of the Prophet والسلام, being in the fire is not something that it's the first time a relative of the messenger of a messenger um, has been uh, declared to be in the fire. And one of the things that this shows us is that your lineage and who you're related to, that in of itself is not going to save you on the day of judgment. It's not going to save you. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not going to save you on the day of judgment. Allah Ta'ala he says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ 
يَوْمَئِذٍ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Allah Ta'ala says, and when the, when the horn is, or the trumpet is blown, when the trumpet is blown, meaning on the Day of Judgment, فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ There was going to be no lineage between them. Because on that day, everyone's going to be busy with himself. Right? No one's going to be going to his brother or his cousin or his uncle because they're, we're go they're going to be fleeing from one another. Right? They're going to be fleeing from another, one another as Allah Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Abasa. That يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ Right, the day that he, the person will flee from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي That he'll flee from his mother and he'll flee from his father and he'll flee from his wife. He'll flee from his children. Right? Because everyone is going to have his own situation. So there's not going to be any ansab. The fact that you come from such and such a lineage or such and such a lineage, that in of itself is not going to be what saves an individual on the Day of Judgment. If a person comes on the Day of Judgment and he has no Iman, and he has no, uh, he does not have Tawheed, and his life was Kufr and Shirk and Dhulm and Fisq and Fujur, and he comes and he says, I'm from the lineage of the Prophet wasallam. That's not going to save him. That's not going to save him. It did, not, it, it, it did not save Abu Talib. It did not save Abu Talib. And look at the status that Abu Talib has. The defense that he gave, the shelter and protection that he gave to his nephew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Look, look, at, look at the defense that he gave and what he sacrificed. And we're, we're going to come to that, inshallah, Ta'ala. We're going to discuss. Uh, Abu Talib inshallah ta'ala in, in the near future bidnillahi ta'ala and the protection uh, that he gave to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam which allowed him to give da'wah but all of that without tawheed without la ilaha illallah without obedience to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam still informed us that Abu Talib would be in the hellfire <coughs> may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us so, uh, our next topic, we want to talk about the Nasib, the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, if we look to the board, <coughs> those who are watching online, uh, some months ago, we posted a post on Facebook uh, that had the lineage of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, what we have on the board listed here that we're going to be talking about. We have that written down, inshallah. So whoever wants to take a look at that, uh, then you can go back and look for that post, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe we'll repost it for, for, the, for the brothers and sisters, so that maybe it won't, we won't make it too difficult for them to find it, inshallah. But if, if you look here, this is the lineage of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. <coughs> so he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, Ibn, uh, Ibn Hashim uh, Did I spell that right? Yeah, that's the M Just ben. Excuse the handwriting, inshallah uh, Ibn Hashim Ibn Abdi Manaf Ibn Qusay Remember we talked about Ibn Abdi Manaf Because we said about the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam She's Amina bint Wahab Ibn Abdi Manaf Which that Abdi Manaf Is not this Abdi Manaf Those are two separate people so he's uh, Ibn Abdul Manaf, Ibn Qusay, Ibn Kilab, Ibn Murrah, Ibn Ka'ab, Ibn Lu'ay, Ibn Ghalib, Ibn Fihr, Ibn Malik, Ibn Nadr, Ibn Kinana, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Mudrika, <coughs> Ibn Ilyas, Ibn Mudar, Ibn Nizar, Ibn Ma'ad, Ibn Adnan. So to this point here, to Adnan, all of the ulama are in agreement that this is the lineage. They're also all in agreement that Adnan is from the, uh, is from the lineage of Ismail. 
where they differ they differ on who's whose father after Adnan who's Adnan's father you're going to find several different positions it was so and so or so and so but they are all in agreement that the lineage of Adnan go traces back to Ismail and Ismail is the son of Ibrahim alayhi <coughs> salam so this is the lineage of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now we had this up here for a long time and i put it here so that everyone when every day come in the masjid kind of take a look at it and i think that maybe some people haven't been taking a look at it who can how far do you think you can get no no don't look shay don't look don't look how 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 far do you think you can get you had to practice, okay. Muhammad, how far do you think you can get without, without looking? Okay, let me hear it. Ewa? 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 Ibn Qusay. And who's the, who's the father of Qusay? Because we've been mentioning, huh? Yeah. Oh, you were just... <laughs> We said, don't look. You say, uh, Kilab. <laughs> now, uh, some of these individuals, uh, like Abdul Muttalib, that wasn't his name. <coughs> Abdul Muttalib wasn't his name. It was more uh, like a nickname. His name was Shaiba, or Shaiba to Hamd. Shaiba to Shaiba ibn Hashim. So the name of Abdul Muttalib, uh, his name is Shaiba. Um, the Hashim, also his was a nickname. His name was Amr. So Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim is really Shaiba ibn Amr. <coughs> now Ab uh, Abdul Munaf, his name was Al Mughira, and Qusay, his name was Zaid. Now, I'm not going to, uh, maybe I will we'll save that, it gets a little bit hard. I want, I want us all really to memorize uh, this whole lineage up to Adnan, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm going to push you guys, be a little bit hard, maybe quiz you as we're walking out the masjid one day. Um, if it was permissible to quiz people from the minbar on Jumu'ah, then we would quiz you on the minbar from Jumu'ah. Um, but this is very important. We talked about loving the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how it's wajib to love the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. As he said, "La la yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidhi wa waladhi wa nasi ajma'in." That none of you will believe until I become more beloved to to him than his father and his child and all of humanity. And so we cannot, <coughs> we cannot love someone we don't know. We can't love someone we do not know. Which is why we're starting with the names of the Prophet wasallam, starting with his parents and, and, his, and his lineage and his tribe so that we can get to know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam is well known. His tribe is what? He comes from the tribe of Quraysh. He comes from the tribe of Quraysh. Now Quraysh, the word Quraysh comes from a taqarrush which means uh, a tijara, uh, business. So they were called Quraysh because of their, uh, their profession. Because we know the Ahl, Ahlu Mecca, the people of Quraysh, uh, they weren't really like farmers or, uh, you know, they weren't builders, but they were businessmen. They were, they were businessmen. Whereas in Medina, <coughs> the people of Medina, they had farms, date farms and different farms. Um, but the people of Mecca, they were businessmen. And a lot of what they had in Mecca was imported. A lot of what they had was imported, and they used to take two trips to Asham every year, you know, you know, bringing back goods so they can 
buy and sell. <coughs> Excuse me. They were very, very good at, and well, they were well known for their business tactics. Bismillah. They were very well known. So they were called Quraysh. They were called Quraysh, which comes from Al Taqarrush, which means Al Tijara. Uh, which means business uh, <clears throat> business and earning business and earning so Ibn Hisham rahimahullah ta'ala in his book as Sirah Nabawiyah the very famous uh, historian he said that there's two opinions as it relates to who is Quraysh in this chain in this chain there are two opinions which one of the grandfathers of the Prophet والسلام, is actually Quraysh? So the first opinion is that Quraysh is Fihr ibn Malik. Fihr ibn Malik. So Fihr, under, on this, under this position, Fihr is Quraysh, and everyone underneath of him, all the children of Fihr, will be considered to be from the tribe of Quraysh. Well, that would necessitate <coughs> that Malik and the children of Malik and everyone before them, they would not be from the tribe of Quraysh. They would not be considered to be Qurayshi. So if a person was from the children of Khuzayma, but not from the children of Fihr, then that person would not be considered to be Qurashi. He would not be considered to be Qurashi. He'd be Adnani, but he would not be Qurashi. Because they say that Fihr is Quraysh. Tayyib. The second position, which is the correct position, <coughs> and we're going to get to why in just a second, inshallah, is that Quraysh is another. Another Ibn Kinana is Quraysh. Another is Quraysh. And so that means that the children of Nadr, or another is Quraysh, and the children of Nadr would be considered, uh, and everyone underneath of another will be considered to be Qurashi. The reason for that is a hadith uh, that came in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, uh, with an authentic chain to Al Ash'ath ibn Qais, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. <coughs> so Al Ash'ath ibn Qais, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, he comes from a tribe that um, they share a mother or they share a grandmother with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning, the mother of one of these individuals, and inshallah ta'ala, I. Um, uh, I, I, it slipped my mind exactly uh, who she was and whose mother she was. But one of the, uh, one of the grandfathers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mother was related to the tribe uh, that where Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais uh, came from. So he said, I, came, I went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I said, Inna naz'umu annaka minna. We claim you, meaning we claim you, you're from our tribe. <coughs> you're from our tribe. Why? Because they have, they're related to the Prophet wasallam, but through their mother or their grand, one of their grandmothers. Uh, so they're related to the Messenger wasallam, but not through any father, but through a grandmother. So Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna naz'umu annaka minna. Indeed, we claim you. Like, you're from us. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Nahnu banu al-Nadr ibn Kinana. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nahnu banu al-Nadr ibn Kinana. Wala naqfu ummana wala nantafi min abina. 
So the Prophet والسلام, he said, We are the tribe of another Ibn Kinana. We do not negate our mothers. We do not negate our mother, meaning that relationship that you're referring to, that mother that that we're related, we're related to the same mother. We're not going to negate that. We don't negate our our lineage, we don't negate our relationships, we do not we do not we don't negate the bloodline that we have with our mothers. However, our lineage goes to our fathers. Meaning we're not going to leave off our fathers. In the, so this shows us that the lineage always goes through the father. The lineage goes through the father always. So what tribe you're from, what's your lineage? Going through the father. One father after the next father after the next father. And so <coughs> the point of proof here is... Um, that when Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, عنه, when he said, you're from us, I mean, you're from our tribe. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, nahnu banu nadr ibn Kinana. We are the tribe of another ibn Kinana. And so to show that this is also the correct, that Quraysh is another, to show that this is the correct understanding, uh, the hadith goes on, and Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, he, he used to say after that, he used to say, no person will come to me uh, who negates, who's from the, who's from the children uh, of another of Kinana and negates that he's Qurashi, except that I will, uh, I will establish the had upon him. I will whip him, the whipping of the had, the whipping of the punishment. So it shows us that there is a punishment uh, for negating your lineage. It shows us that if you come from a certain lineage and you say, no, no, I don't, I'm not from that lineage, then there's a punishment for that. The point here is that Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he said, نَحْنُ بَنُ النَّظُرِ ibn Kinana, We are from the tribe of another ibn Kinana. Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, rahimu, radhi Allah ta'ala anhu, understood that another ibn Kinana that's the tribe of Quraysh. Because he said, whoever comes now and negates that he, uh, being a Qurashi from the children of Nadr ibn Kinana, then I'm going to establish the punishment upon him. So this shows us that, uh, this shows us, <coughs> excuse me, that Quraysh is a Nadr. I don't know if you remember some months ago, we talked about Quraysh and I asked you who is Quraysh, you said Al-Fihr. I don't, do you remember that? And I said, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, you, yes, you, you said that. You remember? Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is the proof, this hadith, uh, and it's in the, found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, an authentic chain, the hadith of Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nahnu banu nadr ibn kinana. We are the tribe of another ibn kinana. So this shows us that Quraysh is another. So that means that every person that is from the children of another and below, then these are the people of Quraysh. These are from the tribe of Quraysh. So inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop here. I know this is a lot of information, a lot of names, <coughs> a lot of names. Inshallah, that some of these names are going to come up again. Some of these names are going to come up again and we're going to be discussing uh, some of them again like Qusay. We're going to be discussing Qusay inshallah. Abdul Muttalib, we're going to be discussing Abdul Muttalib uh, again. Bidnillahi um, ta'ala. So it's important to know these names inshallah ta'ala. Does anybody have uh, any questions about what we've covered so far? Tayyip. So uh, we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala. And we'll pick up uh, next week, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, where I hope to begin the discussion on uh, setting up or discussion of talking about Mecca and some of the um, kind of give a brief history of Mecca and the breakdown of its, um, you know, the, the ahwal, the economic, the economic circumstances, the religious circumstances. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. 
the political circumstances. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, what I'm going to try my best to do is tie that into the history of the world. So we can, as the, we talk about these events, we can also tie it into some of the other things that were happening um, <clears throat> in other parts of the world. Uh, inshallah ta'ala. I can't promise because I'm not that uh, knowledgeable as far as all the history, inshallah. Uh, as far as what was going on in China or in the North Pole and all of that. But we're going to do our best, inshallah ta'ala, uh, to mention what we can mention. Uh, but we're, but the folk, that's not the focus of our, of our lessons. Our focus and our goals is to discuss the seer of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So if that will end, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and bless us. Hadha wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka. على نبينا محمد